Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we have another episode of Unboxing Boxes and we have quite a few boxes to get through. Plenty of things have been piling up while I've been focusing on those Raven Ridge APUs. So I thought let's take a break from all that benchmarking and unbox some boxes. I think we might start with this box here. He looks pretty keen, ready to go. And it is wrapped in the uh, black garbage bag, let's say. It's uh, just a black shrink wrap thing, but we know the good folks over at PC Case Gear like to do that. So good chance this is something from PC Case Gear. I actually hope it is because they've got a few bits I want for a little tiny uh, Raven Ridge build. So we'll get into that first. We've got a heap of other stuff to check out, but we'll start with this. <laughs> Looks like a box that a lot of uh, a lot of Be Quiet Dark Power Pro 11 power supplies come in. I don't think they've sent me a heap of platinum power supplies, though that would be cool if they did. All right, kick starting things off. We have my new TP-Link modem router. Won't go into that though, because. I've just bought that for personal use, probably won't interest too many of you. Then we have the Celsius S24, which is a 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler from Fractal Design. And I do have a Fractal Design build coming up, probably next week or, yeah, soon on the channel. And this will be part of that build. So I won't pull that apart and have a close look at it just now. I actually want to focus on something else and it would be what's in this bland looking box. Uh, now this is the Chopin. I know a lot of people call it Chopin, but it's actually pronounced Chopin, so whatever. But it is an in-win mini ITX case, and you probably have guessed I want to do a tiny little Raven Ridge gaming PC with this case. I think that would be pretty cool. The guys over at PC Case Gear recommended I get the silver model, and I have to say, it already looks pretty special. Wow, that's a smart looking little mini ITX case. So you can orient this little guy in one of two ways. It can lay flat like that, which is sort of, you know, a, a home theater PC kind of look, or you can stand it up like a more traditional sort of desktop PC. Either way, it looks really cool. Plenty of mesh here on top for airflow, plenty on the, uh, which would be also the top, depending on which way, if you stand it up or lay it flat, but the tops, let's say. I uh, got some rubber feet at the bottom, which could also be the side. I'm just confusing myself with all this. But anyway, we have some nice aluminium silver trim the whole way around the edge there, which looks fantastic. I think it looks a bit fancier, a bit more eye-catching than the black trim, but either way, you can get it in black or silver, depending on which one you prefer. For those of you wondering, this thing costs $110 Aussie, and you can get it at PC Case Gear for that price. I'm not sure about US pricing, I wasn't really able to find it for sale in the US, so not sure what's going on with availability there, whether it's just out of stock at the moment, or they're not currently selling it in the US. So as you might have guessed, being as tall or thick as it is, you can't actually fit a discrete graphics card in this thing, so it's more of, well I suppose before the Raven Ridge APUs came along. It's probably more of a, a mini office type PC, but now that you can put a 2400G or a 2200G in this thing, you should be able to get some pretty decent gaming, especially in your eSports type titles. Also included in the $110 asking price is a bronze rated power supply, 150 watt output. So that should be more than enough for even the Raven Ridge uh, with the Vega 11 integrated graphics, your 2400G. So yeah, very keen to do a build in this and see what kind of performance you can get. Maybe make a, a console killer, I kind of hate that term, but anyway. And for those of you that might want to overclock your Raven Ridge APU in this case, you are limited to a cooler that is 43 centimeters tall. So that's the maximum height you have there on the CPU cooler. And with the uh, system empty, because it is a combination, it's a basically a steel uh, chassis, steel frame with steel door panels, and then it is wrapped in the uh, aluminum trim to give it a bit of a fancy look. Anyway, you guys will see much more of this little guy in a video soon when I do do that mini APU build. All right, next up, I think we'll get rid of this little bag here. See what's in this guy. This is actually also from PC Case Gear. They've been spoiling me this week. Let's have a look at what else they've sent over. Okay. Not really uh, have many ideas just yet. 
Ah. Ah, this is a... Ooh. Very nice. They are spoiling me indeed. Well, I'll be using probably this kit here. So this is an 8 gigabyte kit, 2 4 gigabyte DIMMs. It's DDR4 3000. Uh, and the guys at PC Case Gear tell me this works a treat with the new Raven Ridge APUs. And it's also quite cost effective, certainly more so than the 16 gigabyte kit that they've also sent along, quite nice of them. So they're both uh, CL16 kits with, for the primary timing, 16, 18, 18, 38 at 1.35 volts. So these guys come in the gray black, which you can see here and here, or you can get them in red black, which is kind of cool for your, your AMD themed builds as well. But it is the T-Force Dark DDR4 memory. Also has gaming in the name, of course. But yeah, apparently this works really well with the Raven Ridge APUs. So that's what I'll be doing in the in-win show pan. I'll be sticking the 8 gigabyte kit in there. But you could also get 16 gigabytes if you had money to burn. So yeah, again, thank you to PC Case Gear for sending along all this memory. I will put it to good use. Uh, we'll just randomly pick one from over here. Got a random box. All right, let's have a look. We'll open this one together. It's always a bit of fun. If I can cut all the tape off. All right. You guys ready? Ta-da! Hmm. All right, I'll admit that wasn't uh, the most exciting. I think we got more memory here. Come on. Oh, wow. Wow. That is a bit fancy. So it looks like we have the new G-Skill Sniper X uh, DDR4 3600. Wow. I'm actually really keen to try that with the Raven Ridge APUs. Certainly not cost effective, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see if it will run at 3600 on those things and what kind of performance we get out of the graphics. So we have a 16 gigabyte kit, so two 8 gigabyte sticks, and that is CL1919-1939 at 1.35 volts. Wow. Okay, let's have a let's have a closer look at these guys because uh, this this is new memory. I haven't seen this stuff before. It's uh, their new Sniper X memory. It comes in one of three uh, flavors, I suppose. So we have the I think they call this Urban Camo. It's like your sort of concrete looking camo, your greys and a bit of black in there. That actually looks pretty cool. That'll look good on a lot of motherboards. So just quickly, the new Sniper X series comes in uh, one of three themes. So you've got your classic camo, which is pretty much the same as this, but it's your green, so your jungle, forest type themed ones. And then this is the urban uh, camo, which is the concrete jungle type look, I suppose. <laughs> and then there's a third option called digital camo. So yeah, your matrix type theme, I suppose. It's, yeah, it's sort of a yellowy, greeny kind of, yeah, it looks kind of cool. I think of the three of them, probably the classic camo looks a bit odd. They say these are targeted at uh, case modders, uh, not so much enthusiasts. So if you're making a jungle type theme, I suppose the classic camo would be pretty cool for that. But I, yeah, I don't know about that. I think they probably, they might have seen better sales if they had have done like, you know, a black and red camo for your AMD type builds and maybe a blue and black uh, sort of camo for Intel builds. Green seems a bit out of place. I don't know. Yeah, that's very niche there for even the modders, I would have thought. But anyway, there are three options to choose for, for three options to choose from. It's what I'm trying to say. And I think the uh, the urban camo, the the concrete jungle that I have here looks pretty cool. I think that'll suit most motherboards quite nicely. And then you do have the silver strip there and then the rest of the heat spread is black, but you won't see most of that. Anyway, very keen to put these in a build soon and show them off. All right, I think we'll get this big yellow box out of the way. And it's very heavy, very heavy. So we'll see what is in here. All right, there's not too much uh, excitement to see just yet. This is heavy. Oh, wow. Ooh, okay. That looks pretty good. And this also looks interesting. Yep, I've got everything. All right, it looks like here we have ASRock delivering the goods. The X299M Extreme 4. I've, I've heard about this board. I don't believe it's on their website, at least at the time of filming this. And it's definitely not on sale yet, at least at the present point in time. 
So I suppose we should probably open this up and have a closer look. Okay, so a pretty plain looking IO shield, nothing too fancy there. I think this probably is not necessarily to compliment, but uh, they released an X399 uh, micro ATX motherboard recently. And that was very impressive. I will be featuring that in a build soon. But this is the uh, X299 version of that board, I suppose. Excuse me. This knife is not cable tie rated. Almost got it. There we go. Okay, so a compact X299 motherboard. Uh, not quite as compact as the mini ITX version that we put in this build here, if you can see that. That was my crazy uh, micro ITX, mini ITX tower build. This is micro ATX. Uh, but yeah, so not that small, but uh, the advantage of it being micro ATX rather than mini ITX is that you get the standard uh, memory modules instead of the laptop stuff. You get two or there's... What have we got here? We've got two PCI Express Time 16 slots that are wired for Time 16 bandwidth. Then we have a third one at the bottom here, which is a full length slot, but it's only wired for four times bandwidth by the look of it. Um, we've got eight SATA ports on board. We have two Ultra M.2 ports. So the, the X399 board had three, but of course you do get more PCI Express lanes on that particular platform. It's good we have two 8-pin power inputs, so you can feed in plenty of power for overclocking those Core i9 CPUs that tend to run quite hot. Looks like we have a very impressive VRM. Have no details about that, but yeah, details to follow. The heatsink here isn't actually cooling anything directly. It's just connected via a heat pipe off this one here. So that isn't coming in contact with anything. The VRM's all at the top here. All the VRM components. Five fan headers, absolutely nothing on the back of the board. So I think this is meant to be a cost-effective micro ATX X299 motherboard. Certainly looks very good, keen to give that a go. I don't know what build we'll put that in. No doubt something will come up in the not too distant future. Uh, but yeah, no pricing information at this point because as I'm filming this, it's yet to go on sale and uh, ASRock haven't even released any official information about it. But there you go, we have it, so it exists, and you'll probably be able to buy it quite soon. Okay, another product that's yet to go on sale is the, I think this is, let's have a look, the Desk Mini. So it's a mini PC that's probably designed to sit on your desk, so Desk Mini, not a mini desk, makes perfect sense. By that logic, though, I'm surprised the B-Box wasn't called the Visa Mount Mini or something like that or maybe this should be called the bumblebee box Eh. anyway okay so this particular model i've just got a little sticker here telling me hopefully everything i need to know it has a gtx 1060 that's an mxm card in there and it is a z370 uh, version on the motherboard so a z370 chipset so that's very interesting so it's a coffee lake uh, desk mini so we've already seen the KB Lake models using the B250 chipset, I think it was. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, I think so. You wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't have been able to overclock on the previous model, whereas this model, you should be able to to some degree, though I imagine cooling may be an issue. I think I'll provide a full review on this shortly. So, included in the package, we get a very large power brick. Now, it says 19 volts at 11.5 amps, so it doesn't say the output, but that would be about 220 watts. Uh, so 220 watts. So, yeah, you should be able to, with the GTX 1060, there should be a bit of overclocking headroom there. Anyway, that'll all come in the review. And then here is the unit itself. If I can get it out without dropping everything. Okay, so a very compact little PC, even smaller than the Chopin case that we just looked at. So there's the Chopin and there is the Desk Mini. So yeah, the Desk Mini is quite a bit smaller and you can put, I assume, an 8700K in there, or at least an 8700 uh, with a GTX 1060. So that's going to actually smoke this, though I 
probably smokes it in terms of cost as well. Being This is much more expensive. The bare bones model with the B250 chipset with the GTX 1060, that was almost, I think it was around $800 US. And that doesn't include uh, DDR4 memory, doesn't include the processor, uh, and it doesn't include any storage. So it is a bare bone. You get the motherboard and the graphics card. It looks like you do get a cooler. We'll have a quick look inside actually and see what's in this guy. Okay, so I'll throw up some B-roll to give you guys a better look, but that's roughly what's inside. So that would be your GTX 1060 under that, and that will be your Coffee Lake CPU under there. It looks like for my particular review sample, ASRock has kindly provided some DDR4 memory, and they've also provided a CPU. Oh wow, that's pretty awesome. They've included a Core i7-8700 in there. So that is going to be very cool for testing. Wow, I can't wait to get to this. So we have an 80, Core i7-8700. So I'm not sure if it supports the K models or not. It might be limited to 65 watts. We'll, I'm going to have some fun testing that, that's for sure. But anyway, that um, will be on the channel very soon. So as you can see, though, it does have the stock Intel box cooler. There's plenty of ventilation. There's plenty of ventilation in the lid. So getting airflow in there shouldn't be too much of a problem, but it is the stock box cooler, which is pretty crummy. Not sure if there's many aftermarket solutions you can get though that are better that fit in that area. So yeah, we'll have to look into that. And it has a pair of eight gigabyte DDR4 2400 memory modules. So 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2400. Looks like you've got plenty of USB 3s, HDMI output, you've got display output, HDMI output, looks like a mini display port, gigabit LAN, and then the DC power input for the power brick. So very sleek, nice. You've got Type-C and USB 3 at the front with an audio jack. But yeah, sleek, nice looking little system there. So that's going to be very interesting to compare that to what we can do with the uh, Raven Ridge APU. Obviously, this has more power and costs more. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how those two stack up overall. All right. Okay, we'll get the uh, the very blunt and pathetic knife back out because we have another box here that's quite heavy for what it is. You would expect this to be a relatively light box, but it's quite a few kilos of weight in this thing. Ah, that makes sense why it is a power supply. I've opened it backwards and upside down so there you go the fractal design edison m 750 watt 80 plus gold certified power supply now this unit here does weigh well the box says 3.1 kilos so that's why it was quite heavy but it is a semi-modular power supply so the 24 pin power and probably the 8 pin power are fixed into place but the peripheral and pcie power cables are modular that uh, comes with a five-year warranty. The unit itself is 160 millimeters long. And yeah, that's about it for now. I will be featuring this in a build with the uh, the all-in-one from Fractal Design that we looked at at the start or briefly talked about, saw, unboxed, just the box, not the product. Anyway, we'll do the same with this. Let's move on. In here, we have a very, well, I don't know what we have in here, but we have a very light box from Corsair. Getting a bit ahead of myself there. Ah, yes, very good. Okay, what we have here are three controllers. Yes, perfect. That's, yes, that's what I've been after. Three LED controllers for the, uh, you can't really see them, but I have a whole stack of ML120 and 140 fans there, and I can't control the LED function on any of them because the, uh, commander controller doesn't allow that you need to plug this into the commander anyway I have three of these now so I have a very awesome Corsair build coming up shortly and I will be using these in that build second last box what do we have here I think a variety of things by the look of it all right here we go oh that's just like one big lump okay We have a pair of 128 gigabyte NVMe SSDs. So they're for a build. Then we have a whole heap of DDR4 memory. A lot of DDR4 memory in this episode. 
Raven Ridge comes out and everyone goes crazy for DDR4 memory. So we have a 16 gigabyte kit of 2666 memory here. We have a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4 3000 memory here. And we have a 2666 kit. Again, 16 gigabytes, so loads of memory. Now, one of these kits, I think it's this kit here, the fancy looking stuff with the Aura Sync LED lights. I'm giving this away uh, on the channel. We're doing another four channel giveaway with two full PCs. I won't be building one of them this time. I'm taking the easy way out and just giving away a component. And I thought 16 gig of uh, DDR4 3000, that's a pretty sweet prize. So this will be given away soon, but details will be coming in another video soon. So you can enter to win this two PCs and there are a few other components as well. So very cool. But that, well, actually there's one more thing, one more thing, almost at the end of this episode. We have the, these were very popular at Computex last year. They are the GameStorm MF120 uh, frameless fans. And I haven't actually seen these, or well, I've seen them at Computex, but I haven't got them since then. So it's been quite some time since we did see them at Computex. And Deep Cool said, we have a special version of these fans we would like to send you uh, just for you as a present. I was like, sure, I like presents. Who doesn't? Send them along. So I'm not sure what to expect here. Oh, wow. That is cool. <laughs> I'm going to have to provide some B-roll of that. So here are the frameless fans from Deep Cool with their uh, aluminium frame. And on these ones, it says Harbour Unboxed, and I believe that is LED backlit, RGB LED backlit. So I'm gonna have to plug those in. I'll throw up some B-roll of them plugged in so you can see how they look. But uh, thank you very much, Deep Cool. These are awesome. Oh, okay, so I get three of them. That's, that's very nice indeed. I'm gonna have to put them up somewhere. And then there's the controller, the MF control. So the fans plug in there, and you can control them, just as the name suggests. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Deep Cool. I'm very keen to plug these in. Hopefully you guys know what they look like, and hopefully they looked very impressive. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Unboxing Boxes Memory Edition. Hope you guys enjoyed unboxing all the new hardware, some very exciting new products, some yet-to-be-even-really-officially-announced products, like the ASRock motherboard and the Desk Mini PC case. Very exciting stuff, and I have plenty of work ahead of me if I didn't already. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again next time.